talked about, you know, he talks about is making sure that at last performance reviews that don't suck. Uh, and as someone who's watching an organisation, the one I lead at the moment, go through doing 3,000 people's end of year reviews, bring it on, please, for goodness sake. Mike Carter. <laughs> talking about building an audience, so uh, that's an encouraging start. Um, so Sonar 6 is a very simple business. We do employ performance reviews online. And um, there's about a billion people in the world who have some kind of annual or, or more frequent performance review. And generally, people think performance reviews suck. So if you can fix that and monetize it to, say, $20 per person per year, then you've got a $20 billion total available market. And that's the market that Sonar 6 is playing in very successfully. So um, I'm going to talk today about, about building an audience, and um, really this is going to be a short story about a big mistake we made at Sonar 6, and how we um, learned from that mistake. So Sonar 6 is about uh, five years old, five years old, and um, we started off by building a great product, a fabulous product that everyone we showed it to just went, that's awesome, we love it, it's cool, we, we want it. Um, just unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't seem to buy it, right? and um, <laughs> if they did buy it, it just seemed to take them an inordinate amount of time to make a decision. Our sales cycle was about nine months long. And that's really frustrating because you want to sell more stuff now, right? And so we came up with this plan, this, this great plan to fix this problem, and this plan basically looked like this. We would shorten the sales cycle by adding more salespeople. And this, of course, was our mistake. Um, in fact, shortening the sales cycle is probably not a lever that you can pull. Uh, in fact, we surmised that... that Probably people would do pretty much what they were going to do, pretty much when they were going to do it, regardless of how many convincing salespeople we added to the model. Um, and in fact, the only lever that we could pull is maybe putting more people into the funnel and then working out the lowest cost possible way of nurturing those people for as long as it took. And so we started to build what we call the active path, which said that the journey from becoming aware of Sona 6 to buying Sona 6 is actually a process. And the, the job of marketing and sales is to add as many people to that process as possible and then progress them through these different phases in that process until they eventually buy something. So a little bit of detail about that. The first box we call suspects, and that's the, that's the whole world of people out there who could be interested in our category who don't even know of Sonar 6. And what we're trying to do there is not sell Sonar 6. What we're trying to do there is open a dialogue with a whole bunch of people get their permission to have some kind of ongoing conversation with them and, and basically get them to opt in. And, and how do we do that? Well, that comes to the second rule of, of marketing at Sonar 6, which is about being likeable. So people have conversations with people they like. Right? It's, it's that simple. You know, people don't typically want to have conversations with salespeople. They want to have conversations with people they like. And so we went about building lots of kind of content which was kind of friendly and interesting and funny and amazing and so on. And we spread that around through search engine marketing or search engine optimization or trade shows or social media or outreach email, things like that to try and get people to opt in. And this concept of likability has real, real kind of marketing, um, it's, it's part of marketing right now because the, the ubiquitous Facebook like button, when you click like, you, you like something because it's likable, right? And um, as an aside, so I said, we've got 22,000, like 23,000 Facebook fans. We've got 23,000 Facebook fans. We make HR software. Right? People can actually like stuff like HR software. And um, you know, we also have, um, yeah, have 80,000 people who've kind of opted in to receive our weekly emails and so on. Now, another example of what I'm talking about here about being likable is when we Etsy booth with shiny shoe salespeople trying to sell you Sun R6. Now, we and Steve have a, an enormous cardboard box which we can get people right on because getting people to opt in is about being likable. Now, once you have people opted in, then you're kind of in this dialogue with them, right? You're trying to keep them in conversation, and you're sending them an email, um, your likable kind of email. Um, you're also you know, <coughs> blogging, you're, you're updating your fan page, you're, you're tweeting, and so on. But all the time, you're trying to understand their behavior and see if they're doing things like visiting your website, you know, forwarding your information around, doing price requests, because you're trying to identify when they're starting to become a lead, when they're starting to become the kind of, of, of prospect that's actually going to buy something. And, um, this comes on to rule number three, which we say at Sonar 6 is that you've got to be the newspaper, not the ads, right? And so what that means is that you should spend some of your energy trying to encourage people along the process, right? Try and get them to do free trial, try and get them to attend your webinars, that sort of stuff. But you should spend most of your energy keeping the dialogue open because you need to keep it open for so long. And 
And in fact, the rule of thumb that we have at Sonar 6 is that in our communications with our prospects, we never talk about Sonar 6 more than 25% of the time. Stuff like how angry birds can make you a better manager, because that's much more interesting. Um, and then, if you get this right, you'll have your salespeople drinking from a fire hose of qualified leads that are actually buying stuff. You won't have your salespeople you know, explaining how your pricing model works or explaining how to build the, the, the business case. Instead, you'll have salespeople to close deals, and that's ultimately what you want for this business to work. So there's the kind of summary of, of, of those points. But if you look at the upshot of all of this, for Sonar 6, over the last 24 months we've introduced this model, we have taken our worldwide sales force from six people down to two people. And at the same time, we have quadrupled our sales level. So that's Sonar 6. Remember, if you manage people, www.sonar6.com, you can go and buy it. Okay, thank you. <laughs>